Welcome to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Join us each week, no matter where you find yourself, physically or spiritually, as we share real conversations that are relevant to believers today. We want to help you experience and incorporate God in your life, not just on Sundays, but every day. Let's join the conversation now. On behalf of the Bible Chapel, welcome to Let's Chat. So glad you're joining us. We uh, we're coming off a prayer series that launched us in the beginning of 2024. Uh, coming up soon, at the end of this month, we are launching a series that we've entitled Legacy. We're going to talk about uh, all the people God has used in the 60 years of our church. We're celebrating 60 years in April, so you're going to have a lot of guests that we're going to interact with who have decades of legacy and impact for Jesus Christ at the Bible Chapel. So we're excited for that, and in between... Those two series, as we're now in the in the February, and February is Black History Month. It's been on my heart to uh, for some time to want to do a series uh, engaged on the issue of race. And if you were with us at the Bible Chapel this summer, uh, myself and Rob Thornton, our campus pastor in Wilkinsburg, we did a a whole sermon on the topic of, of race, and uh, I appreciated the response to that. It was great to see the Church of Jesus Christ embrace it, that as a church we can talk about race and talk about it according to what God's Word says. So if you want to listen to that, you can go find that on our Backyard Conversation series when we did that. Uh, Today I'm really excited because we're going to do a a short, uh, just uh, a series here on on what we're going to call biblical diversity, biblical diversity, and just talk about the issues of race and talk about what God's Word has to say and at the end of the day, we say biblical diversity because what we really want to do in this in this podcast is to celebrate how God has uniquely created us and how how us in our sin have used our unique design by God to divide uh, throughout history, uh, not just American history, but all of history. You can go back since Genesis chapter three, but yet God wants us to come into unity under the headship of His Son. Uh, based off our our diversity. And uh, before I introduce you to my uh, my special guest for this, I want to read really the, the two verses that are going to drive uh, the, the, the time we're going to spend in this biblical diversity uh, time on Lich Chat. And it's Revelation 7, 9, and 10. After this, I look, this is John speaking, giving a glimpse of heaven. And John says, And behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, speaking of Jesus, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And what I love about this uh, section of Scripture is John could have said, Then I saw a great number of people. No, he went out of his way to describe from every nation, from all tribes, all peoples, all languages. He notes the diversity that God's going to have of his people in heaven. And man, if if we're going to celebrate that in heaven, then we better celebrate that now here on earth. And uh, with that introduction and that theme, I'm excited for this unique series to introduce my brother in Christ, Mr. Teron (laughs) Jenkins. Teron, welcome to Let's Chat. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. We've actually, for I think it's been a few years now, have talked about doing a podcast together. We have. We have, right? We have. And now multiple that, times. Multiple times. Yep. And now that you're here and you got to meet Josh and our awesome team, yes. we both said, I don't think you and I could ever do this by ourselves. Not at all. <laughs> now, now that I see what comes with it, yeah, not a chance. No chance. Now, yeah. when we talked about doing a podcast yes. together- we were pretty set on the name of yes, that podcast. Yes, we were. Yes. Black guy, white white guy, Jesus. Black guy, white yeah. guy, Jesus. Let's just tell what it is. Yes. Black guy, white guy, Jesus. We love that because, uh, one, it celebrates who we are, Indeed. right? our unique creation, uh, the reality that you're black, I'm white, yes. and there's one reason why you and I are so close, and Absolutely. his name is Jesus. Absolutely. His name is Jesus. Yep. So what we want to do um, with this biblical diversity time in Let's Chat is Teron and I talked about uh, well, let's just talk about our friendship and our relationship. And then in the second part of the biblical diversity uh, time here, we're going to talk about God's word, you know, and, and what does God's word have to say regarding race, mm-hmm. racism, which is such a word that uh, when you hear that, a lot of people don't want to address it. We're going to address it. Absolutely. Racial reconciliation. And at the end of the day, going back to Revelation 7, just man, looking forward to that day when all sin is gone. 
and the diverse people of God are worshiping him in unity. And our goal, I mean, if you get to know Tehran and I at all, our goal is to promote that now and use our relationship. So, one, love you. Love Di Ray, your wife. Yes. Your two kids. Yes. And, uh, and we got close when I was in Wilkinsburg. Yes. And God called Kristen and I there. That was back in 2012 into 2013. And for the first few years, I didn't meet you because we were in the, the school, Pucks. And then we got the, the small Baptist church behind the school. Right. And one weekend, this uh, strong black leader, I can already tell he's a leader, <laughs> in a suit, yeah. walks in. And uh, by the way, Tehran's a lawyer, which a lawyer and pastor, another thing that most people say, how do those two things go yeah, together? Man. But yeah, Jesus. For sure. You walked in and uh, and I was and I remember meeting uh, you and Di Ray and I, I was wondering, I hope they stick. Like, I hope they stick. I had no idea what God had in store. But I'll never forget that first weekend you guys walked into the Wilkinsburg yeah. campus. Now, tell it from your perspective. For sure. How uh, we ended up at the Bible chapel. Yeah, what led you to the church and just uh, your first impressions of the Bible chapel in Wilkinsburg. Sure. And let's, since it's about you and I here, yeah. your first you impressions know, I'm tell it to you straight. of me. That's tell right. it to That's us right. straight. That's right. So I, um, my wife and I, we had always gone to separate churches, and we said that we wanted to... Uh, find a church to worship together. So we moved to uh, Churchill in 2016. And we said, you know, this is a good time. Right. You know, we're in Churchill. Let's try to find a church. Which is the neighboring the borough, right. you would say. Of Absolutely. Yeah. 10 minutes away. Right. So I remember one night she was playing on her phone. She said, there's this place called the Bible Chapel down in Wilkinsburg. We should check it out. I said, cool, let's go down there. So we get down there. Um, there's, like I said, it was a 10 minute drive. And I remember walking in. And the thing that really captured my attention was the diversity mm. because all my life for the most part, I've been to more churches than I could ever count, but they've been predominantly black churches. Mm -hmm. So, but what I will say, the church that I went to when I was growing up, it was a mixed church. It was in walking distance of my house. But prior to that, all the churches that I've been to have been black congregations. So when I walked in and I saw the diversity, it was, it was attractive, mm. but I, I appreciated it because it's something that you don't see a whole lot of, at least yeah. in the city of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yes. And before you uh, hit your first impressions mm -hmm. of the pastor of this church yes. that you walked into, um, to give you context, because if you're from the Bible Chapel, you know of Wilkinsburg. If not, Wilkinsburg is, uh, demographic is 66% African American. There's only a few, few boroughs like that yes. in the city limits, and not, not at all in the suburbs. That's right. So um, it's about 66% African American, 33% white. Yes. And uh, so it was, uh, uh, the demographics we were hoping would pr promote diversity. Indeed. But it was hard work to get I'm there. Sure we'll get was. into that more. Yes. But by the time you got there, we were starting to reach that goal of, of a diverse group of believers. So you love the look of the church when you walked mm -hmm. in. What was your first impressions of me? Uh, when I saw you, I'm like, man, this church, this guy's a kid. It's like, <laughs> That's what I saw a kid. I'm like, man, I'm how can I follow this guy? I'm like, he's he looks like he's 12. He's white. <laughs> this isn't gonna work out. But um, the thing that you know really struck me is because we have visited a lot of churches and we met a lot of pastors through our journey, and you came over and you welcomed us. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though a church is supposed to be a a house of love, what have you. Every church isn't like that. Mm. And I think we've talked about it. I, I've gone to some churches and the, the pastors are very loving, but they're not really good with people. Mm. And some of them are good with the word and not good with the people, but you were a good blend of both. So, that, you know, I appreciated that. I said, you know what? Let's go back. Let's give this kid a chance. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I love that because even when we, that's when I knew our friendship would be real because you told me that right away that, you know, initially when I met you, I was like, I don't know if I can follow this this pastor who's just like a white young kid. And I did look younger back yeah, then. You did. Ministry, you did. You didn't have a quick. beard. No, no, no beard. That's right. No gray. That's right. That's right. I mean, that was now good you're as your a seasoned beard. vet. I'm a seasoned yeah, vet. That's, that's a good right. way to put it. That's right. No longer a little kid. That's right. I've grown up. You've grown All up. All right. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah. All right. So that was the initial impression. Mm -hmm. And then I think a critical moment in our relationship yes. was uh, when uh, you and I Ray said, All right, we're going to plant roots here. And we decided, you know, 
we wanted to get you guys through some discipleship time. That's together. right. Living ground, living ground. Yep. And I said, Hey, what if I take you guys through that? Right. And how we set it up was you would uh, do the workbook at home and we have a breakfast hour still to this day. And that breakfast hour is just a sweet time because we do bless the community yes. for so many homeless and others who need a meal. But it's a it's a church family moment too. Indeed. So we would do that. You would sit down, and we would just sit down during breakfast hour and go right. through God's word. That was really cool. And I felt like that yeah. was the moment for me where our bond took off. Definitely. Would you agree with Definitely, that? Definitely, because we had that one on one time, and right. oftentimes when you go to churches, you don't have access to the man of God of the house, mm. and you were right there with the people, and I've, I've always respected that about you. And I remember, uh, and I, that's why I always say. Um, there's some relationships where it takes time to go deep, like th to grow that trust. Then there's others, and I just compare them to Jonathan and David in scripture. Mm. There's a, there's a work of God between two people. No doubt. Whether you, they're you immediately united by the power of God's spirit. That's right. And for you and I, for the many reasons that, uh, culture would say we would not be the best friends we should be immediately by the power of God's spirit, you and I had a bond. We sure did. And uh, and we started obviously fellowshipping with the word of God. Then outside of that, uh, you worked downtown during that time. You used to come down for lunch. You used to come down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes get Thai food and you would be sweating. Yes. With, in your full suit. Yes, that's right. And at times, that's right. you know, you're in a full suit. I'm just thinking I would come down there and I'd be in jeans and a sweatshirt. And I said, people think I'm one of your clients right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe. Me. That's right. Those were good times. Those were great Those times. Those were good times. But we just, we just grew that bond. Sure did. And uh, that's only something else can do. And the realness of our relationship was beyond just uh, that initial bond and worshiping together is you and I have always been able to have healthy dialogue on race. Absolutely. And, f and one, as a, a white pastor who grew up in, in a community that was 97, 98% white, um, and I only had a few, uh, other students in my school who were black. And, uh, you know, I told the story before and from the pulpit that, uh, my only close friend who was black in high school, uh, we played sports together. Mm -hmm. I was a quarterback, he was a receiver. I was point guard. He was shooting guard and they called us salt and pepper. Like that was our <laughs> nickname. And then, uh, Rob Thornton took that. When we right. started speaking together, That's right. he said, Dave, they're going to call us now. Salt absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. But. Because that's all I knew, yeah. Um, that was my experience. And then when God called our family to Wilkinsburg, which is predominantly African American, mm -hmm. um, I did a ton of research on the Wilkinsburg community. Because in my eyes, look, if you're going to go reach this community for Christ, you got to know the people that you're going to minister to. And I didn't. For my initial study was okay, sixty-six percent African American. But then when I delved into what was going on in Wilkinsburg. It opened my eyes to the, the, the what many black communities experience. Uh, when it came to medium household income, mm -hmm. they were the lowest in the entire city of Pittsburgh, of every right. borough. The suburbs, much higher, but just even the boroughs of Pittsburgh, tied basically with Homewood, which is the only other predominantly mm -hmm. African-American community. I said, man, okay. And then I researched the school district and I found that Wilkinsburg School District is was 496th out of 498 in the entire state. I didn't know that. Academically. Wow. The other two lowest were inner city schools in Philly. Mm. And then I'm like, well, let me, hold on. Let me broaden this out. So then I looked at, all right, what's the bottom 20? They were more African-American predominant communities. I grew up in the South Hills of Pittsburgh where we have some of the top 10 schools in the state. Let me just look at the top 15 schools in the state, all well over 90% white. Mm. Now, let's let's have an honest dialogue here. That doesn't mean people in all these communities are racist. Right? That's just the reality of predominantly the white community and the black community. Mm -hmm. So my heart quickly realized, man, there many of our black communities, if not all of them, are hurting in a lot of areas financially, uh, the schools, and then that that trickles down to just jobs and money, yes, homeless rate, that's right, and many other things that I, as a as a white pastor whose eyes were open, what I appreciated about our campus, and then 
my brothers and sisters like you was you allowed me as the pastor of that church to go through that growing phase of understanding and speaking into your experience as a black man and your and, and your experience growing up that it enriched our our race our relationship was enriched by the mm -hmm. fact that we could have honest dialogue about race all rooted back to Jesus That's right, right? And our, we're going to get to that a lot more uh, in this podcast when we get into what the scripture have to say. Certainly. But I just want to say, that's when our relationship got real, real. It I mean, did. honestly. It did. And that love for one another, that we could acknowledge what was going on in our community that we were serving, but do it in an open, loving manner for one another. And... Uh, and we've done that ever since. We have. It hasn't stopped. So, I mean, if you didn't know that, maybe you're from the Bible Chapel or your guest. I mean, just giving you a background of Wilkinsburg is that um, it was it was a it was a God moment when I got opened my eyes to finally not only and uh, being able to worship in a diverse community, which I wasn't used to in growing a church, but understanding that every community is go is not mm -hmm. the same. It's not the same. And uh, including that, and we'll get into the topic of racism, right? We'll get into that uh, later on and just what the Bible has to say about that word. Um, but I think about, it has, we praise God, it's been uh, hundreds of years now since uh, slavery. And decades and decades and decades and since Jim Crow. We praise God for that in our country. But it doesn't mean since that has ended that our black communities aren't still going through a struggle from what happened during those years Certainly. and cultural political lingo wants to use that to divide and we're not going to do that as the church right what we do is acknowledge the needs uh of the black community that's what we want to do in wilkinsburg what does god's word have to say about and what impact can we go to make change for christ and we were able to have those dialogues together we hope you're enjoying Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. Be sure to subscribe and follow as we release new episodes every week. Now, let's get back to the conversation. I was long-winded there. No, but, you're good. But that was my yeah, experience definitely. in Wilkinsburg. It was just life-changing for me. And having brothers like you who would respect me as their pastor, but also allow me to grow and learn from you as a black man and and just growing and just getting understand what what every day a uh, the black community experiences. So, um, talk about your experience now. Certainly, as yeah. a lawyer, yeah, and just what you've experienced as a Christian leader. Certainly, in Pittsburgh. Certainly, I mean, by way of background, I grew up in a predominantly white area. I grew up in Morova. I went to Gateway, mm -hmm. IUP Law School. You know, my entire educational experience has been in white environments yeah and with that came some very hurtful events that you know i still process to this day hmm. you know i have three older sisters and you know when we get together we often talk about some of the racism that we experienced in growing up through, through the school system and it's it's we didn't really fully comprehend what we were going through mm -hmm. until we got older and we started sharing stories with each other it's like we've all had similar experience and that's just not limited to my sisters or also the friends I grew up with we all kind of experienced the same thing but you know by the grace of God you know I, I never let any of the hate and adversity that I face deter me or steer me in the wrong direction so yeah. you know my parents I come from a good family they let me know the importance of an education so I went to law school became a lawyer and what I found is that racism exists within our court system as well. It's like, it's a conversation that people don't like to have, but it's a necessary conversation. And the thing that I love and appreciate about you is you're not willing to shy away from those difficult conversations because I know some of the topics that come up can be indicting. Mm -hmm. And you have always kept an open mind and open heart to my struggle, yeah, because it 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 hasn't been easy. I'm not looking for anybody's sympathy, but at the same time, it needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, and I think that's what you hit on the end. There is the foundation of our relationship is being willing to listen. Certainly, no subject off the table. Certainly, and, and I, uh, sorry, and always coming back to God. Definitely, and uh, and watching your growth 
of your identity being in Christ. Because we could go into a lot of the career paths you have been through. I've, I've, I've been and some places. <laughs> you've been some places. And you felt the Lord called you into the political yeah, arena. Certainly. And that was a hard time. Oh, man. Because. That was a storm. <laughs> the biggest storm you faced was being a Christian. Yeah. And you were pressed on some issues. And uh, if you didn't have the church and brothers and sisters like this, that could have been a very lonely time. Um, God got me through it. God got you through it. Yes. But I was most proud of you is the fact that in those moments, on some of the toughest moments, you just stuck to God's word. Absolutely. And uh, and being able to pray with you during those times. Certainly. And the beauty is you and I, and I think this is so key, um, I'm sure you and I don't see eye to eye on every issue. Uh, you're not right? going to see eye to eye. With anybody. Yes. Yeah. But, ask, ask my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dyer would say, amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But what's key is we see eye to eye on Jesus. Absolutely. The importance of his church, raising our kids to know him. And we see eye to eye that we can talk about the reality of race. Absolutely. And what and what does God's word have to say in shepherding? And, um, you know, I always talk about uh, in the church and with pastors is you need to have brothers and accountability outside of your local body. I mean, yes. if you're going to be the shepherd of that body, uh, it's good to lead with leadership vulnerability, but you have to protect the flock. You can't be an open book. Mm -hmm. Therefore you need brothers outside of that, of your flock, your shepherding. And you've been that guy for mm -hmm. me. I could call you anytime. Appreciate and that. that say, goes both ways. help me out Teron. I got caught, uh, later on in my time in Wilkinsburg, starting to doubt, um, as a white pastor in a predominantly black community, am I really the long-term solution to lead this flock? I, I thought in my mind, what's best for this community would have a black lead pastor. And, uh, and, and I actually brought that up to our leadership. You were in that meeting and I said, you know, I just don't know long-term if we're serious about reaching Wilkinsburg and it's a predominantly black community. Do we need a black lead pastor here? Meaning uh, there will be a time where maybe it's best that I'm not the guy. And it was, it was zero hesitation. If you haven't, if you've gotten to know Tehran already, he's a strong leader, but he's a soft-spoken man. <laughs> he's not a domineering with a loud voice going to hit you. And I know where you were sitting, because I was standing here, you were sitting in a seat on the other side of the room. And you simply said something like, Dave, I disagree with you. Yeah. You just came that. out and said yeah. it. Yeah. And you said, you don't have to be black to be the shepherd of this body. You have already proven that. Look at the room. And I looked around the room and I saw a diverse group of people. I share that because that was so impactful in my life because I started to let my own color of skin dictate where God could put me and use me. Certainly. Right? Certainly. I started to fall into that trap. And, uh, and I just remember God used you in the moment to say, stop listening to mm -hmm. those lies. Certainly. Like I'm the God who brought this body together. And if I want you here, you're going to be the guy. Stop looking at That's your own right. color. For of sure. Skin. It was For such sure. A, but just, you said you remember that moment. I just, do remember what do, that. What do you remember about that moment? Man, it made, this, it made you is, say that. Definitely. This is what I'll tell you. I, um, I mean, I've shared, I've been in church all my life. I've had more pastors than I can count. I mean, I've told you this a million times. It's it's hard for me to follow people, brother. Mm -hmm. I'm not one to just follow anybody for the sake of following them. And you've uh, you demonstrated that you were a man of, of character. But you didn't just talk the talk. You walked the walk. And you had a heart for God, which made it very easy for me to follow you. So when you had that moment of uh, insecurity, if you will. Yeah, that's called what it is. For honestly. sure. It, it, it Without hesitation, I felt that I needed to speak life into you because I saw hmm. the impact of your presence in that house. I mm -hmm. mean, look at the vast, the, the diverse array of people that you brought together. Mm -hmm. And I think that obviously speaks to your anointing and mm -hmm. the need for you to be the leader of that, of that, of that flock. Thank you, brother. Certainly. Appreciate you. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So. That's some background. You got to you got to know real quick about Tehran and I, and just yes. the richness of our relationship because of that. But I do want to go back to the Wilkinsburg campus. Yes, because you said what uh, really drew you to the campus was the fact that when you walked in, you got to see a diverse group of believers. Definitely. And and this is going to be a thread from this episode into the next one because the next one we're going to dive into 
more what's the Bible have to say about race and, mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff. But um, by the time you came, it was hard work just to get to the point of diversity. And I do believe because because churches are are the fabric of their community, right? Uh, meaning, if uh, you said you grew up often going to black churches, mm-hmm. right? That means mostly, most most likely those churches were near the demographic of African American communities. That's exactly right? right. So I grew up going to predominantly white churches. Well, that's because I grew up in areas that were predominantly white. So we have pockets of every city is like that. All that to say is, if you want to experience racial diversity, economic diversity, what whatever that is, in a ecclesia a community of believers, you got to work hard to make that happen. You got to be willing to cross communities. You got to be intentional. You got to be intentional. Right. And I say that because just because God put us in a, a community that was 66% African-American, 33% Caucasian white, didn't mean all of a sudden the whole community, our <laughs> body was going to be diverse. It took intentionality it did. and it took trust and it took time and it took diving into the next generation, right? We had our mentoring ministry with yes. the Boys and Girls Club. I love that. We did basketball together. Yes. You were with that. You helped with the youth. Like yeah. we didn't even have a youth leader. We just That's did right. it. You were there on Wednesday nights helping us. And over time, God started to create this beautiful melting pot of believers. Yeah, it was a great and thing. And that gets me fired up and emotional only because I know the work it took to get there and the trust people had to have in me and the others. And I think about when our brother Ted was there. Yes. And you had a black pastor leader with a white guy leading together and the flock started to fall. Yes. And 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 I and I think I remember, I remember vividly, I don't know what weekend it was. You guys are already there at that point. And I don't know why I didn't notice this in the past. But I remember Ted would always lead worship and I would stand in the back. Yep. And we often, back in the day when I wasn't preaching, we would try to hit a, a go live time to join the South Hills. And you know, Ted, when he gets going, he's not stopping, right? And I'm looking back there like, oh man, you got to wrap up soon. <laughs> but there was one weekend where the church was full. The church was full. And I looked out and I saw all different ages because a lot of our mentoring children were there. Our children's That's ministry right. were up there. I saw a lot of different uh, economic diversity. I saw those who live from Penn Hills north hills and i know they were doing well and i saw folks literally who went from our homeless breakfast outreach that's in right. repute and then i looked out and i saw different colors of skin that's right and it was an emotional moment that where else in the world could you have racial diversity economic diversity generational diversity mm-hmm. all in unity that's except right. for the church only jesus can do that that's right and I looked at that, for me, like John in Revelation, that was a glimpse of heaven. Absolutely. And like you and I talked about what was, and, I, and I'm going on here because I'm, I'm just so excited that you're here talking <laughs> oh, about this. Oh, it's all good, brother. Let's go to that. Before I share a little yeah. more of that, just talk about the height of, 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 of our Wilkinsburg time. Yeah. And just was... your, your, your remembrance of, of as you got deeper into yeah. the community and what we were doing together. Yeah, it was a great time because uh, as I described earlier, I had never been in a church like that. Yeah. And to see so many families that, you know, they didn't all look like me. It was just just the diversity, which is it's a beautiful thing. And it, it's it was almost as though colors didn't matter. Yeah. We were just all there mm. for the same purpose. And it's it's rare, but at least based upon my experience, it's rare to go to a church to experience that type of love. Right. Right. And it it pushed me to get involved, something that I typically didn't do. You know, I was involved with the youth, yep. working with the young, the young men, yep. something that I really enjoyed. My wife got involved, you know, Children's my wife, mission, right. Oh, yeah. That really wasn't her thing, but you know, just the environment that we fostered there, it was just, it was a great thing. Right, and you hit a big thing that uh, once we were doing ministry to reach people for Jesus, we didn't talk about race that much, mm-hmm. like in the, in the actual campus church itself. We were so busy <laughs> working together. We were. And we were just focused on, all right, well, we got to do more in outreach. How are we going to get more students? Should we launch this ministry? Should we do a prayer walk? Like we were just working together. Yes. And that's the, uh, uh, the beauty that we're going to get into in, in the episode two here 
is how do you balance diversity and unity, like acknowledging both, like acknowledge God's diversity and the good and bad in our world because of sin and what comes from that, but then also always bring us back to unity. And, that, and that's my biggest word I can think about in our time together at that church was just the sense of unity by the spirit of the living God. Definitely. Working us together, Definitely. working us together. And, uh, and it was a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. All right, so what I want to do is I wanted to use this episode mm -hmm. just to introduce ourselves and, and who we are, what God's done. And, mission uh, accomplished. Mission accomplished, <laughs> I think so. Because I, I want you guys, one, to hear, hear something we're going to challenge you in the next episode, which is uh, the only way that uh, Jesus can be the answer to many of the issues of race is if this happens. Mm -hmm. People who don't look like each other and sit down and have a conversation and talk about one another, one another's experiences, all rooted in, in who Christ is. Certainly. And as we get to that next episode, as always, there was one man who modeled it the best and his name is Jesus Christ. That's right. His name is Jesus, who's our ultimate model. So, Teron, episode one, it was good. Long time coming, Long brother. time yeah, coming. That's right. Black guy, that's white right. guy, Jesus finally it's, happened. It's teeing up. We're teeing up. It's we did teeing it. up. All right. So I want you to come back next week. We're going to dive in deeper now into uh, what scripture has to say and what we talked about. You, you got to hear, hear our testimony. But next week, we're going to talk about biblical diversity straight from God's word. And at the end of the day, if you're listening and this, this is stretching for you, mm -hmm. I think it is for all of us. Um, what do I do? Like, what do I do in this area of race and what the Bible has to say? And maybe you're like me who grew up, I'm in a predominantly white community. I'm in a predominantly black community. How can I engage mm. others who don't look like me? We're going to talk about that according to what God's word says. Amen. So if those are questions you have, make sure you get with us next week. But, uh, all right, Teron, good right, job. Brother. Good yep. job. Episode one. Indeed. And, uh, make sure you join us next week. We're hitting Biblical Diversity Part 2. Thanks for joining us on Let's Chat. Thanks for listening to Let's Chat, a Bible Chapel podcast. If you're in the Pittsburgh area and looking for a home church, we want to invite you to visit us this weekend. You can click the link in the description and show notes for more information. If you want to join us online, you can visit BibleChapel.org. We can't wait to connect with you.